Okay, everybody, thank you for joining me for our fall webinar series. This is our Optionetics powered by Tom's Trading Room Trading Essentials webinar series. Uh, we're going to do this, I believe we're going to be doing this a matter of three to possibly four times a year. And so each time we do this, we're going to bring more and more education uh, to the table. What I've done for us this year <laughs> and uh, showed some of you guys off screen before we began is that check this out. I'm here. All right. I am live. I'm trying to give you the idea that you're sitting in a seminar room and you're looking at the instruction and you're looking at us right here on the screen. All right. This is as good as it gets without me physically being in a room with you. And so that was my plan. That was been my plan the entire year. And it took a lot of work and it took a lot of money to get to the point where we are right now. Uh, we still have a few things that we want to do, including adding in uh, some more powerful signals and maybe even working with some different webinar groups so that we can bl blast out a really thick bandwidth so that we don't have any lag. But this is this is pretty good. This is pretty good for now. And I want to thank all of you for the comments that you had uh, prior to the recording uh, that, that what we're doing here. So um, my whole purpose here is to continue to educate you and really enhance your experience as a student, as a member, and even as a partner uh, with us here. So um, my plan is very simple. We're going to be going in and out of this screen. Uh, when we teach concepts, they'll be taught like we have before with uh, presentation. But I'm going to be moving in and out when we get to case studies so that I can show you not only how I'm putting the case studies together, um, but even why. Risk, reward, break even, et cetera. And so I'm going to be using my touch screen here. And I'm going to be moving from quotes to possibly charts uh, to even risk graphs. So we're going to have a lot of fun tonight, guys, and going forward. Let's go ahead and get started. So what I want to do first with you is let's move back to the slides that we were looking at first. And that would be uh, our Option X Trading Essential slide. Before I begin, let me uh, make a few uh, ground rules for you real quick. Um, number one, this session and all of the sessions that we're doing for Trading Essentials are recorded. You will get a recording of this immediately after the live session is over. Now, when I say immediately, I mean we have to go ahead and upload it and get it out to you. So it will take a little while, but I'm talking maybe at the most within a few hours after the live event's over. Next thing is if you're with us live and you have questions to ask, feel free to ask a question in the Q&A box that's on the client side of this live webinar. I'm going to apologize to you right away because there is no way we're going to be able to answer every single question and get this, and get this uh, webinar done in a timely manner. Therefore, if you have questions also, you can email us at support at tomgentile.com. All right, so if I don't handle your question, um, you know, uh, it's not because uh, it was a bad question. There is no such thing as a bad question. It's just we couldn't get to them. So I'm going to answer, we're going to ask and answer the most popular questions uh, that will help everybody out uh, as well as yourself. Finally, you see the disclaimer that's on the screen here. Um, we publish this for every webinar that we do here at Optionetics and Tom's Trading Room. And a couple of things I want to point out to you here. You can read this in its entirety. Um, in fact, you can hit pause on the recording that you will get following this live webinar. Um, but a couple of things I want to mention to you. Stock and options trading has large potential rewards, but also large potential risk. You must be aware of these risks and willing to accept them in order to invest in the stock and options market. Other thing I want to mention too is that myself, Jay, everyone associated with Option X and Tom's Trading Room, we are here as your educators. We're not personal investment advisors. We do not give specific trading advice. You need a broker to trade with, you must meet certain requirements. And everything I'm going to talk about tonight is in US dollars and less noted otherwise. So for those of you that found me finally, all right, I am so happy to have you back. Um, for those of you that are a little bit new to me, uh, you know, that, that came in to see us through Tom's Trading Room, uh, I've been doing this for over 25 years. In fact, I was thinking about it. 1986 was my first involvement in the markets. I was 21 years old then. You can do the math. Uh, I don't. I don't do the math anymore. <laughs> there's a, there's a certain time where you just stop doing the math uh, on, on your age. Um, but if you you notice this, I mean, it's, we're we're hitting more like 30 years. But I want to mention this. I was not a veteran for 30 years. All right, I was an amateur for several years in the beginning. I actually um, went from being an, a, more of a novice trader to going to New York, and I quit a really 
really uh, a good job, all right, good career to go to Wall Street and be an $8 an hour runner at the America Stock Exchange. And so um, my partner, God rest his soul, George Fontenilles and I uh, started a company called Optionetics, which all of you should know about. Uh, we had a lot of students come through the two-day Optionetics Trading Essentials webinar or seminars, which are now webinars that you are seeing as you do today. I've had several books on stock index and options markets out there. I do TV every once in a while, but not as much as I used to. Um, in fact, if you really want to see me on television, CNBC Singapore is where I typically do most of my broadcast. In fact, they wanted me on last night uh, or two nights ago for a um, uh, my take on Wells Fargo and the bank stocks as we're heading into another quarter of earnings. What you most note, note me for is not only OptionX.com, but uh, I'm the founder and editor of TomGentile.com, TomsTradingRoom.com, and TomsOptionTools.com, which is where we have our software and we do a lot of our risk graphing, back testing, etc. Cetera, et cetera. Uh, if you go to OptionX.com, it's going to look a little different now because we have a temporary page up there right now as we are rebuilding the website. And that temporary page at www.OptionX.com will give you all these things uh, that we are doing right now, which is Tom's Trading Room, returning Option X students, Platinum users, Tom's Tools, and of course, a little bit about me if you don't know anything about me. All right. What we're doing is we are doing weekly webinars here for the month of October from 8 to 9 p.m. Eastern Time. I have three of them scheduled for you. I may have a bonus that comes up. All right. I may do a bonus, and if I do, you do not have to register for it. I will let you know during the session if we decide to do a bonus fourth webinar. All right, recordings are made available, emailed out to you following the live event. And also any slides that I may have, uh, I will put those in as well in PDF format. And those will be made available to you as well. All right, we'll get those in nice and tucked away into an email for you. So what my agenda is for right now is week one, we're going to talk about all about calls and puts and trading what I call the dark net strategy. All right, week two is going to be a review plus spread trading and trading the money calendar. And then week three, we're going to do a review, and we're going to also talk about trading the butterfly strategy, as I will have on guest lecturer and trader Christina Nugent, who, by the way, right now is in New Zealand. Now, every time I talk to this woman, she's in a different country. It's like she has a bucket list, and she is determined to get that bucket list filled well into still now into her youth. <laughs> so every time I talk to her, she's, she's on the run uh, talking about where she's at, what she's doing. Uh, I, I think her and my programmer are having a race to see who can do the most cruises uh, over a certain amount of time. And I don't know which one is, uh, is on a, a ship more. But anyway, that's our web webinar agenda. Now, when I start a webinar, I talk about most or what I call best tradable stocks. And where are best tradable stocks found? Well, I'd like to find them in three areas. And I call it market liquidity, stock mobility, and what I call short-term optionable. Because if you take those three and you dial them down, you're dealing with a really good list that you can work with. All right. Uh, and so, you know, where do you find these three? Well, one of the best places to go is the Chicago Board Options Exchange. If you go to the Chicago Board Options Exchange, what you'll find is something called the Penny Pilot List. And that Penny Pilot List will show you exactly where uh, I download options that have bids and offers that are inside the five cent spread. All right, This gives you stocks that have the most liquid options out there. Now, one of the things you can do is you can simply Google Penny Pilot Program. All right, Now, if you go to Google, you type in Penny Pilot Program in that little Google search window and click on the uh, search button. It's going to bring up something called the CBOE Hybrid Penny Pilot Program. Now, what you do there is if you look in that page, it's going to say click here for a CSV file of Penny Pilot Classes. Basically, all that is is that is a file for you to give you the, the most liquid stocks that are available out there. All right. So I like to call this from 4,000 to 400. And 4,000 to 400 looks like this. There are roughly 4,000 optionable stocks out there to work with. When you Google penny pilot options and weeklies and you take those and put them into one area, you get what I like to call the pennies and weeklies stock list. All right. 
Now I have a couple of things that I look at when I'm looking at penny and weekly stock lists, and I'm going to slide on over here and show you a little bit about what I'm talking about. All right, so I'm at TomsOptionTools.com. Now you can get your list from the Chicago Board Options Exchange, uh, just like I showed you using the Penny Pilot program. Or what you could do is you can use our tools, and then it's just a matter of, for instance, uh, I can go to uh, all the way over here to website. And I can click on lists and I can go to edit list. Now, edit list also gives me the ability to view my lists. And I can select a list. And guess what? I've got all kinds of lists on here, but here's one called pennies and weeklies. And if you look at my pennies and weeklies list, and it's a little thin right now because this doesn't have the ETFs in it, but it does have all the stocks right now that are both. Penny Pilot stocks, that means they are stocks on the Penny Pilot list that trade inside the five cent bid ask window, and they also trade weeklies. All right, that squeezes the list down even more. So that's what I like to do, is I, and I like to search from this list because now I'm weeding out 90% of what I don't want to look at. There's one exception. There's one exception. There's one week. Where everything becomes a weekly stock, uh, a weekly, a weekly option, and that is the third Friday of every month. The third Friday of every month, everything's weekly because you got all optional stocks uh, that have listed options that are American listed options will expire the third Friday of every month. Not every option has a second Friday or a first Friday, and I'm going to get it, get into that in just a moment. So, moving on. Um, why do we trade options? All right, we all know why we trade options. We trade options because we want the control of handling a larger group of stock for a lower price. That's leverage. We want the protection uh, of doing this as well. And finally, we want to pay for that protection. And when I say pay for that protection, what I'm talking about is something like, uh, for instance, uh, bull call spreads. All right. Bull call spreads, for instance, uh, it could be uh, you're buying a uh, call and you're selling a call. And I'm going to get into that next week. But really where I want to go with you right now is I want to talk about these two things. I want to talk about calls, all right, which give us the right to buy. And I want to talk about puts, which give us the right to sell. So those are the areas I want to work on with you tonight. And also I've got a couple case studies. I actually have three good case studies. I believe two are in calls and I have one put case study that I want to share with you tonight uh, that is based off of live data and, and research that we did earlier today. So getting back to our list here, calls, let's talk about calls first. So um, let's go ahead and use a case study with the most popular stock that it literally is traded in America. More people know about Apple than any other company on the exchange. And so I'm showing you a chart on Apple that actually is uh, a previous chart from the summer. All right. Now, the reason I want to show you this is that we're actually going to work through what calls are and what I look at for calls. And then I want to show you a live example. So that's the plan here uh, for, for going forward. So this is a chart of Apple. It's Apple's past. Uh, this goes out until the summer of this year. As you can see here, Apple has had a, uh, a relatively nice little channel to the upside. And maybe that's a reason why we might want to go out there and look at call options as an example uh, for trading. So if that is so, what if I have the right, instead of buying the, the uh, stock itself, um, what if I have the right to buy the stock for a fraction? And that's what a call option gives me the, gives me the ability to do. Now, couple of questions that new option traders have when it comes to, to looking at call options. Number one, how many options can I buy at 155 a share? Number two, can I buy Apple stock options at different prices other than 155? And number three, how much time do I have on my option? So the answer to number one is what's called contract size. Number two is strike prices. And number three is expiration. Let's talk about each of those very quickly. Number one, contract size. Um, one equals 100. That means that one contract, one option contract is good for 100 shares of stock in the United States. There's a couple of countries out there where one actually equals a thousand, meaning that now we can see 
uh, a thousand shares of stock for one option. And some of you probably are licking your chops right now and thinking, wow, I wish, uh, I wish we had that in America. We had one equals a thousand. Let me tell you the reason why one equals a thousand in these other countries is because their stocks are trading for $5 a share, $3 a share. So the only way to really get true leverage on a stock that's less than $10 a share is if your contract is good for more than, uh, than 100 shares. All right. Uh, strike prices. So your strike price is basically a price you're greeting upon with the seller to purchase the stock. Now, you and I both know 99% of us do not go to exercise the option. We simply look to sell that option for a higher price in the future. The strike price is the price that the buyer can exercise for. But again, exercising really only happens uh, to me in two areas. Number one, if you have a leap option and it goes severely in the money and you don't want to take the tax consequence right now, so maybe what you do is you decide to exercise that call option and take the stock. Number two, if you're an employee, all right, if you're an employee of a company and your company, let's say your company uh, uh, issues you ISOs, all right, an ISO is a, an incentive option, it's an incentive stock option. So that ISO actually uh, is something that keeps you around. All right? A lot of people refer to them as golden handcuffs. All right? So an ISO, for instance, um, may offer you the ability to exercise your company's, those options in the company stock, and maybe they give it to you as 10% a year or 25% a year or whatever that may be. All right? A lot of people that are in a growing company may wish to, instead of selling their their options, they wish to exercise them and therefore try to avoid a taxable consequence for the foreseeable future. Okay, So those are the things that, that I, I wanted to share with you real quick as we were looking at, uh, at these details. The last one is expiration dates. Expiration dates, uh, well, most of us know the most important expiration date or what we call the most popular one, and that is the third Friday of the month. All right? We all know that. All right? But if you look... Um, at uh, the calendar, then you'll see that there's other things that happen. We've got weeklies, we've got Wednesday options, we've got EOMs, we've got quarterlies, we have leaps, which are best, which are best. And so I wanna share with you this calendar right here. I'm actually gonna give you the slide for this as well as the entire slide deck. Um, I'll have that to you by email, but uh, let's jump on the board here real quick as I explain some of these to you. So we've got our 2017 October monthly calendar. Everybody sees that there. What is what here, all right? Well, you have a couple of things that I'm sure you can see on the board. And if I were to just light up the board a bit here, you can see a couple of things. First of all, down the Wednesday column, all right? These are the options that are now expiring on Wednesdays. There's not, a, not several of them. It's just started. It's just catching on, just like weeklies were catching on about, oh, seven years ago, okay? Do I trade Wednesdays? I'm going to tell you, I don't. I don't trade Wednesdays, all right? I don't want to be a big fish in a small pond. I'm waiting for this pond to get a little fuller before I decide to go wading into it. But where do I trade? Well, I trade the Friday options. I trade the weeklies, all right? Those are the ones that expire every Friday. Now, this one is red. This is the most important, most liquid traded option of the month. That is not only a weekly, but it's a monthly. These are the options that expire the third Friday of the month. Over here, you might see something in yellow. Let me move this way. <laughs> Over here, you might see something in yellow. Now, this option is what we call the EOM, or the end of the month option, all right? We have end of month options. They expire every last trading day of the month, all right? So how liquid are they? Not very liquid, okay? So you know where I sit in the aspect of trading? Right in here. All right, I love these options right here. All right, they have the most liquidity, especially this one. If I'm trading 30 days or more to expiration, I am, Jay will tell you, nine times out of 10, I'm looking at that third Friday option. If I'm inside the 30-day mark, I'll look at anything with a Friday expiration date on it, okay? That's what we do. And so now let's move on back over to the screen again. And let's talk about our option chain. So when I'm looking at Apple, for instance, all right, the first thing I'm doing is I'm looking to see, well, what kind of expiration does Apple have? All right, in this case, uh, looking at our tools, 
you know, I'll look at things like the number of strikes that are in an expiration date. I'll look at the date itself. All right. And then I'll analyze any date that I decide to check mark on. And then if you see the controls over there to the right, then you will see that from there I can do things. I can do a lot of things with what we have there on the screen. Um, I can go to uh, everything from how far up and down I want to go to what kind of display I want to look at, et cetera. And then it gives me the information you see here. For example, these were the July 7th, 2017 call options for Apple at the time. All right. And from there, I'm looking to see what's the difference, you know, looking at bid offer, the bid ask screen, and I'm looking to see what that bid ask looks like. And is it something that makes sense to me? Now, this area right here, when you're looking at this, you got to be thinking to yourself, if you're new to this, you got to be thinking, wow, that is a lot of data on that screen. I'm not sure what I'm looking at. Well, guess what, guys? That's where this, what, what I'm doing right now, comes in handy. Because now I can actually point to you exactly what it is that we're looking at on the screen. So let's look at the, one, the 150 calls, for instance. And this is my bid, my mid, and my ask. But I want you to pay attention to the bid and the ask. All right? 535 by 565. All right, that's a 30 cent bid ask. Look at the next one down, 380 by 395. That's the 152 and a half calls. That is a 15 cent bid ask. Come down to the 155s for a moment, 246 by 256. Now, can these get tighter? They most certainly can. All right. One of the best ways they get tighter, if you look right here at this slide or at that strike price. Apple, 2017, July 7th, 155 call. I'm telling you right now, if that was a week three option, those spreads would be thinner between the bid and the offer. Okay? So that's what we see there. Now, we got some definitions I want to share with you. In, at, and out of the money. Very quickly, I'm going to mention these and I'm going to tell you what I like. In the money options have mostly real value. All right. That's where, for instance, if you have a call option, here's your stock price. Your call option is going to be below the stock price. Out of the money is where your option is above the call. All right. Or I'm sorry, your call option is above the strike price. It has no real value. At the money is where the stock and the strike prices are the same, but still have no real value. Now, where do I go as a trader? It depends on time. All right. But in the 30 day realm, I like in the money options. How far in the money? One or two strikes, maybe a little bit more. I like to look for what's called an options delta of 70. What does that mean? That means that 70% of that option is based on real value. It also means that 70% of that option, or, or, or if the stock moves a dollar, theoretically that option should move 70 cents. All right, it should move 70% of the value of the stock at that time. Okay. All right. Let's get rid of that. And let's look at some more. So options that expire into money. And I'm going to talk about expiration for just a moment. If you let an option go to expiration and it expires into money, you're going to end up with stock the next Monday morning. All right. If it's a Friday option, if you have long calls, that becomes long stock. If you have long puts, that becomes short stock. All right. Now, what about at the money or out of the money options? Well, because they have a real value of zero, they will both expire worthless. All right. Something as a buyer you do not want to have happen. I have had that happen very, very little in my life as a trader, because I've learned that as closer we get to expiration, if I'm not in the money, if I'm at the money or out of the money, it makes sense that if I don't know, I need to just get out. All right, next, volatility. Volatility is the speed, what we call the speed of the stock relative to its time. Okay? There are two types of volatility that I look at, um, and I judge these looking at our tools. Number one is statistical volatility. That's actually past stock movement. Number two is implied volatility. That is looking at present option pricing, right? So let's look at a couple of these, and I'll show you what I'm talking about here. So I'm going to come over here to this side, and now you're looking right now at a statistical volatility chart 
for Apple. All right. Now, what this basically this chart tells me is it tells me the move, the range of the stock price. All right. Not whether it's bullish or bearish, but the past volatility based on past true range of the stock. And I have a red line, which is six day. I have a blue, which is 10. I have a green, which is 20. And I have a, a black, which is 100. Now, just like every other graph that we look at uh, with Tom's option tools, you're going to know that the red line is typically the most volatile because it implores the least amount of data. Six days versus 100. All right, so you need to think about what type of an option trader you are. If you're a six-day or seven-day option trader, yeah, you're going to be more interested in what's going on with this six-day chart. If you are an option trader that looks at two and three and four-month options, then yeah, maybe you're going to look at the black line, which represents 100 days of statistical volatility. This is an implied volatility chart. So remember, statistical means past stock prices. What does implied mean? It means future perception of stock prices. And so as you see here, this is an example looking at Apple. This is a recent example of Apple. And I want to show something to you. Notice right up here, spike. And right up here, spike. These happened prior to earnings. All right. So what typically happens with Apple and a lot of other stocks is we see this rise that goes up right before earnings and then this big drop off that occurs right after earnings. All right. Pump up. And then as soon as the news comes out, push down. I want you to think about this. All right. Imagine you're going to the Yankees game right now. I just got off the phone with a trader uh, that I'm just checking in with him. He's heading to the Yankees game. Uh, let's say you're going to the Yankees game and let's say it's a playoff game. All right. If you are a ticket scalper, do you think you're going to have a better chance of getting rid of those tickets at a higher price two weeks before the game starts or two minutes before the game starts. That's exactly what ends up happening. Ticket scalping is a lot like earnings reports. All right, you think about this that um, I'm gonna change pens here. Let's grab the black one. So as we're moving closer and closer to the event, which could be the Yankees game, it could be the Super Bowl, it could be earnings, all right? Those option prices are getting more and more expensive. Once the game starts, once the earnings are announced, now the unknown becomes known, and we go right back down to what we may call fair value. All right? And so keep in mind, a lot of that happens. And you take that analogy that we just talked about. A lot of that happens not only with, um, with uh, games and events that we think about all the time. It happens very similar when it comes to uh, stock price and option price movement. So. Uh, a couple things about Apple. Maybe we're looking at Apple, and some of the things we're looking at are that uh, Apple moves up nine in the last 10 years during mid-June to mid-July before its earnings announcement. And the other thing that we might look at if we do some research is that in this case, uh, back during this time frame, Apple made a 33% average jump in implied volatility during that time frame. Whatever your basis is for looking at stocks, you always need to, number one, be able to spot that opportunity. This is a couple of ways of spotting opportunity with a stock, and this is an example we're using, obviously, is Apple. So let's move along, a quick little side-by-side -side comparison. And you can see here that when I'm looking at Apple, I can have a cost, and I can look at long 100 shares of Apple. and It might cost me for $155. We're talking about $150 or $15,500 cost and risk. That's if the stock goes to zero, which is... Very unlikely it would, but talk to those folks that had Enron. Uh, talk to the folks that had any, you know, that were were long um, uh, the the mortgage companies, uh, mortgage stocks, brokerage firms that went out of business ten years ago, nine years ago, and so you know they know that this possibility could happen for any company, no matter how low the probability. If you see a profit here and it jumps five points, then you'd make a five hundred dollar profit on. 100 shares of stock that had a $15,500 risk. That equates out to about a 3% ROI. Why do we trade options? It's very simple. You're looking at a lower cost, a lower risk. Uh, the break even is going to be higher than the stock price because the stock price's break even is always where you bought it at that time. But the reward to risk ratio here looks much, much better 
than something you could ever possibly see looking at a stock price itself. All right. So um, let's move on. And I've shown you a few of these real quick. So I'm going to move up to our details. And this is a detail sheet of what Apple's call option would look like at $2.50 uh, an option. So that tells me that if I'm paying $2.50 for an option, what am I doing? I'm buying this for basically $250. Remember, your call option price is always going to be the price of the call times 100. And that tells you what you're going to end up paying for it before commissions. All right. I also know what my break even is. It's going to be strike price plus the premium that you paid for the option. This is a risk graph of the call option. And by the way, let me just show you what this looks like on the board because I want to share this with you guys. So uh, take a look at our graph. And you'll see here, I've got four lines that are happening. So this right now, we've got the stock priced at 154. All right, that's the blue line. The blue line here, all right, if you're a hockey player, the blue line means something else. But if you're looking at risk graphs and you're looking at risk graphs on Tom's option tools, the blue line means that's where the stock price is currently, 154. All right. If the stock price goes up, you know, where do I need to where does it need to go for me to theoretically make a thousand dollars on this position? Well, it's very simple. You just climb up the vertical ladder and you go to where the, the, the risk graph lines come together. Then you simply go across and you say to yourself, oh, it must be around 167 and a half. That's where I make $1,000 on the trade. What about 500, Tom? Well, we need to be just a little bit before 163. You go up, you go across. And there's 163 just above it. All right. That's how you read one of these modern risk graphs. And a modern risk graph is one that's married to the stock chart that's to the left-hand side. Stock chart on the left, risk graph on the right. Okay, So that's how we look at, at the risk graphs. Now, um, this is a risk graph that shows volatility for Apple, all right? And I think option traders, myself, uh, I believe they fall into three categories. Those that think about price and only price, those are what I like to call the novice option traders, okay? The second option trader is one that thinks about time, all right? Not just price, but he also looks at time as part of the equation too, all right? And then finally, there's the option trader that looks at volatility. All right, they'll look at volatility and they'll help, they'll, they'll look and see uh, how volatility can help them. When you're looking at this chart right now that I'm showing you, volatility is on the low side of Apple, which makes it even more appealing for buying options premium. Okay, now I'm gonna stop right here because guess what? It's time to actually look at a trade case study in real time. So we're going to look at Tom's option tools. Um, before I get to this, Jay, any questions, comments that I need to know about? Right now, it's all systems go. Everybody's tracking you real well, Tom. Awesome. All right. So what I'm doing here is I'm looking at Tom's option tools. And what I've done is I've, I've kind of sped this up a little bit uh, for you. So I'm looking at a stock chart up here, and I brought up a bullish chart. And that bullish chart is Apple. All right, we have a potential bull happening here in Apple. Now, let me show you why. Because when you look at the technical analysis, you might say, but Tom, this looks like a head and shoulders top. What's going on with, with Apple? Uh, you know, if it really was a head and shoulders top, then probably those of you that are technical analysts would say, well, there's the neckline, and this area right here would be the target for the bottom. That could be a potential concern uh, for a, 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 a really a potential bullish play. All right, that could happen. Let's erase all that real quick, because what I'm looking at is something entirely different. I'm looking at something that I want to show you next week, which is patterns in the market. Did you know that nine times out of the last 10 years, Apple has moved higher between right about now, all right, all the way until the end of October, all right? What's also happening at the end of October for Apple, all right? What's happening is what, should, what they wanted to have happen what was it, a couple weeks ago? It didn't happen. And that was when they unveiled the iPhone 8, the stock has pretty much set still, if not gone down. All right. In fact, it did go down. Take a look here. This was 9-11, all right, uh, or 9-12, excuse me. 9-12 was when they released that iPhone 8. And at the time, the stock was trading just south of 164. 
We came down all the, all the way down below 150 before rebounding. The 10 is, being, is going to be pre-released on October 27th. So uh, let's take that out of the equation because what my patterns don't do is they don't look and see what's being announced uh, because nothing can. That's all fundamental speculation. Right? But what we do know is that during the broad month of October, 90% of the time in the last 10 years, Apple's moved higher. This is good to know. All right. So what I want to do is I want to create an option trade based off of the information that I know as a rules based trader. So that brings me to my option screen. Now, to get to here, what I did for those of you that are following along with me, this is very simple. I'm going to options and I'm going to option chains. And when I go to options and option chains, this is where it takes me. Now, I've already set up uh, what I believe are the correct options to look at. If there is a time frame I'm looking at, and it's between now and October 31st, what I'm doing is I'm looking for the options that expire as close to that date as possible. Look here. Uh, I've got options that expire on October 27th. All right? October 27th. You might say, but that's not long enough, Tom. Listen, Apple's announcing that their, their pre-sale starts on the iPhone 10 on October 27th or 28th. And I like to be out of the market before big events happen because that's where the volatility and a lot of the risk happen. So this is going to get me out right at the, about the right time. So if I scroll down a little bit more, what I see is I see how much I'm going to pay for these options, what the time value is on the options. We call that extrinsic value. The implied volatilities, the deltas, the stocks percent to double. Uh, or, or the, the, the percent to double on the stock. So that means how much does the stock have to move in order for you to double your money on that option? By the way, that yellow color, that shows me the lowest percent to double. Notice that it's also, it has the highest volume and the highest open interest over here too. So maybe I'm interested in that 155 call. So I'm going to go in here and key in a call option, buying those 155 calls. Let's click on the risk graph. Let's bring up a risk graph of what this will look like. So this trade is going to cost me mid-price $301. I see 301, all right? Look at the slippage. It's four bucks. That means that it's $4 off the, off the middle. And I know that because we're only a few cents wide between the bid and the offer. That's a really good slippage rate. Very, very small slippage rate. I also know as a call option until expiration, we have unlimited profit potential, all right? Another interesting thing I want to show you is the break even. The break even is 15801. Now, Apple's been to 164. If we believe Apple's going to get back up to around the 164 area, let's do some math, all right? The math is this. 155, all right? So let's put our target 164 right here. Let's put our strike price below it. 155. With not too much more than elementary math, we can determine how much those options are going to be worth if we get to, from uh, 155 to 164. That would be nine. If you paid three for something that's worth nine, that's a triple. 301 to nine is almost a triple. All right. But I wanted to share that with you because it doesn't take much more than that to at least begin to plan your work as a trader. So, what have we done so far? We spot our opportunity, and I'm going to share with you what that opportunity is next week. All right. Next thing I did was I went in and I planned my low risk trade. And while this may not be the best trade, it's definitely a start because what we did was we looked at how much is it going to cost me and where is my target? What if my target was 160? Would I still make money at expiration? The answer is yes. All right. A 155 call if the stock gets to 160, is a five-point option. If I paid three for a five-point option, I have two points profit. All right? That is the, the absolute least I should get for that option if the stock goes to 160. Now, below that, we see the risk graph. And the risk graph is very simple. It just gives me an idea of, you know, I'm, I'm able to see now the chart itself. And you might say, well, wow, it was in a downtrend. Yeah. You might be right if you were looking at the last couple months, but if you go back to summer, then you'll see that the trend is actually still up on Apple. 
right? So we're going to get into the details and the minutia as how Apple looks like a good trade. But I wanted to share it with you as a case study today, and I'm going to ask you to follow along with this as we move forward. All right, so that is our risk graph for Apple. And the next, quite, the next piece I have for you, and I'm going to move back over here, I'm going to slide back over, is what about puts? All right, what about puts? So trading puts for profit are very, it's very, very similar to trading calls. All right, puts have the same characteristics. The thing is, is they just go up in a down market. All right, that means they increase in value as the price decreases. So now what I want to do is I want to come back over to the screen with you again, and I want to share with you a put example. So my stock chart I want to show you with puts is in Bed Bath & Beyond. If any of you have followed me for any length of time, and I hope it's been months, if not years, then you know that starting last year, I was getting extremely bearish on pr practically any retailer that was a bricks and mortar uh, retailer because Amazon's eating all their is eating the lunches of all these guys. Bed Bath & Beyond is nothing different. In fact, my Italian mother-in-law uh, always, when, when we take her to Bed Bath & Beyond, she always calls it Bed Bath & Behind. And it's because she, she reads it wrong and you know she laughs too. But I think she might be onto something here because these guys are absolutely behind when it comes to the way they're structuring their business because every single product they, they own, Amazon selling it for less and it's actually delivering it. People are getting more and more delivery conscious. Um, in my house, I, there's not a day that goes by that there's not packages that show up with all kinds of household needs and everybody else is the same way. You know, we want it quicker, faster, cheaper, uh, and we want to be able to do it uh, with as little inconvenience as possible and deliveries, you know, have just gone out of control. Um, this is great for online retailers, not so great for bricks and mortar that have not become online retailers or not uh, really stepped up the game. As you can see, Bed Bath & Behind uh, had a bad earnings report and dropped off hard. Since then, it's been in a trading range. You know, if I were to believe this stock had any chance of making a comeback technically, we would have seen this kind of price action where we ran back up to fill the gap. That did not happen. And because that did not happen, and because of a couple of other things that I'm looking at, this one looks bearish. And by the way, nine times out of the last 10 years, between now and the first week of November, this stock has fallen. That's why I like it to the downside, another pattern trade. So we pop on over to our options. And again, what I do is I go to sto uh, stocks, options, and I go to options chains, and here's the option chains for Bed Bath & Beyond. Now, I'm looking to the right-hand side, the, the side that my body is like in front of right now, so I'm gonna move this way. And so what I'm looking at over here, is I'm looking at the puts. Calls on the left, puts on the right. Now I'm looking at these puts and I'm saying to myself, wow, there's a, there's a, uh, this is not a, an Apple stock. It does not have an Apple price. The stock traded today at $23.25. This is one of those examples where I like in the money options, all right, because we may not get the big move to the downside we're looking for, and it might eat up the time value we have. In fact, if you look, it shows the lowest percent to double uh, at the 23 puts. Problem is, these 23 puts, and this is, a, this is a, an October 20th expiration date, these 23 puts may not have what it takes to get down below 20 before we eat up that 45 cents that it's going to cost for those puts. So they're cheap but it might be cheap options to get a lot cheaper. I'd rather take myself and put myself into as mo much of the money as possible and get eliminate one of the biggest risks of an option trader and that is time value. So what do I like? I like, if you know anything about me, I like round number prices. I don't like half strikes, never liked half strikes. When I look here, I see 23 and a half, no, 24. Okay, they're trading for a dollar, but 26 cents of that is time value. I know that because this is my column for extrinsic trade. So of my dollar one, 26 cents is time. No. 24 and a half, that's a half strike. No. 25s. 25 puts. 
$1.77 by $1.89. Okay, the spread's a little bit wide, but I can deal with that. That's what limit orders are for. Look at this. Eight cents of time premium. All of the rest of that $1.83 is real. I like that. That's what I like when I'm looking at an example for a put option. So this would be, the example, would be buying the October 20, uh, 20th 25 put for a dollar, and we're dollar seventy-seven by dollar eighty-nine. Now, I'd like you to track this one as well. So I've given you two trades tonight, Apple, and I've also given you another one, uh, which is Bed Bath & Beyond. One is a call option trade, one is a put option trade. They're both around the same time frame. All right, looking at the, the October options. Finally, and I got a few more minutes because I want to show you uh, a strategy tonight. All right, um, our strategy tonight I want to show you before I do is, is uh, it's called the darknet strategy. Before I get into that strategy, Jay, any questions? <laughs> I'm answering one right now about a home study course audio or, or CD <laughs> set. Uh, we got I'm them, sure folks. You're going to address that. I'm sure you're going to address it, but I'm taking care of this guy right here. That's all we got. Everything. Yeah, yeah. Go no, we have a full home home study course and audio uh, uh, set that we've recently done, and I'll talk about those later. But uh, really, what I want you to do is I want you to focus on uh, all about calls, all about puts. Look at the case studies that we did. Um, it, it, I'm not done yet because I want to show you Darknet, which is really cool. This thing is just. It's been absolutely on fire this year. We've really loved this strategy. It is as close to the Elliott Wave strategy that we can get, only we made it easier, and we also made it where you don't have to constantly follow the wave counts. So what is Darknet? Darknet is a strategy that uh, we've put together that uh, involves channels. Okay, So you have different channels that can occur uh, with a, a stock, uh, stock movement. You can have uptrend channels. You know, you've got channels where stocks move in an uptrend. And then you've got channels where stocks move sideways. And then you've got channels where stocks move in a downtrend. So looking at those channels, what we've been able to look at is three specific channels, short, intermediate, and long-term channels, and have been able to put those together and look for what we call channel collisions. Channel collisions are really cool because what they do is they spot a channel within a channel within a channel, and then we spot a buying opportunity. What we've also noticed is that with our darknet strategy, buying opportunities work out so much better than bearish opportunities. So bullish opportunities are where we put ourselves when it comes to a trading strategy like this. How long do these trades typically last? Around the 20 to 30 day trading mark. So they're perfect for an income trader, okay? Now I'm showing you uh, examples uh, here on the screen from yesterday because I'd like you to follow them. But what we found is we found a couple of them here. And what happens is, is that when you go to Darknet, so Darknet is available on Tom's Option Tools. And if you go into Tom's Option Tools, you'll see the Darknet analysis chart and you click on the, the analysis Darknet channel and it's going to pop that up. And it's going to bring those up for you as you're seeing right now. So from there, you just click on search. Now, what I'm showing you is what happens when you click on search immediately get these. So what we do is we scan all the dark net stocks for you. And within seconds, you get potentials, potential opportunities on the screen. Now, this is an example of seven different opportunities that came up yesterday. Now, they may not all be good opportunities. All right. And the reason I said that is because I like to sort these. These are sorted right now by percent to double. So whatever's up on top has the smallest percent to double. Okay, so MUB, for instance, is the, the iShares SP National AMT3. And so if I click on MUB, you can see the chart that pops up. So now this is a chart of MUB, and I want you to pay attention to this. Here is a dark net buy that occurred back in July. There is the sell that occurred. All right, these, unlike wave counts, do not change. All right, if we have one that didn't work, you're going to see it. This one actually happened to work. Now, what I look for is I like to find patterns of stocks where you see them over and over and over again. And then down here, over here on the far right-hand side, we have a buy. Now, there are three buying entry levels, up to three, in a dark net strategy. We have a B, which is a buy. We have an R, which is a rebuy. And then we have an A, which is your third add-on. Okay, It will, as 
setups reoccur give you second and third entry levels. So as I'm looking at this, I'm going to move on. I'm going to show you all the other charts. Why would MUB not be possibly a good uh, candidate? Well, what I do is it, it, when I'm looking at these stocks, I'm looking at a couple things. I'm looking at slippage. All right. I want to find the lowest slippage possible because that tells me I can get in and out of that position uh, very easily. IV rank, the lower the better as a call option buyer. Again, I like to buy low and sell high, not just on price, but on IV as well. Implied volatility means I'm buying the options cheap. The delta, remember I said I like things that are above 70? Well, I can rule out several of these in here because I see a lot of 60s in here. And by the way, if I go over here and I say uh, darknet search filters and I click on 40, and let me change that real quick. Let's make that a 70. Watch this. We're going to research. And when I research, now let's get rid of the markings that I've made so far. Um, and let's just back up one more, one more shot. Um, okay, my hand just popped in there and, and did something, so I'm going to reset the whole thing again. So here is uh, the, the, the chart we were looking at. I'm going to go ahead and hit the search button. There's our seven stocks, just like I showed you before. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go in here. I'm going to change this 40 delta to a 70 delta. And then I'm going to click on search once again. Now, all I've done is I've just researched this stock to cut down. Now, all I'm doing is I'm just looking at those symbols that have slippage, IV rank, deltas that are 70 or greater and then percent the doubles. Notice MUB is still up there. Maybe that's a good trade. Uh, I also have X FXC. I talk about that one quite a bit. That is the, uh, the foreign or the currency shares Canadian dollar. So if I go over there and I click on that, it's going to bring up a chart of the Canadian dollar. You can see here we had a buy and a rebuy and then a sell slightly above it. We had a buy here in August. Uh, one, two, three, about 10 trading days later, we had a sell above that. Most recently, we've had a buy at around, looks like about 79 and three quarters and another rebuy right at 79. Okay, so it shows you that. Click again and your touch, it's, it's one touch brings up the chart, another touch collapses the chart, okay? But more importantly, what I've noticed is, look here, uh, you've got the precious metals, double dollar uh, or the uh, power shares, precious metals, buy, sell, buy, rebuy, sell, buy, rebuy, hopefully we get a sell that's higher. All right, click it again, and the chart disappears. SLV is on here, all right? Then there's the Power Share Silver. There's the Pro Shares Ultra Silver. What I'm seeing is I'm seeing a lot of gold and silver popping up on the screen. And so is it time for gold and silver to see a rebound? Because uh, if you've been with us here, here in the last couple of weeks, we've been calling gold and silver to the downside, and that's exactly what's been happening. All right, but now I'm starting to see a lot of these pop popping up on Darknet. Again, 20-day trade, 30-day trade. Is it possible that gold and silver are ready for a rebound? I think the possibility is highly likely, but that is uh, Darknet. So let's go in and let's look at an example of a trade that we can look at using uh, uh, Darknet, and that would be SLV. I picked SLV because, again, I saw a lot of Darknet buys in precious metals. The second thing is that of all the precious metals, SLV has the least amount of slippage and the highest amount of liquidity. Now take a look at the chart. Now you know why we've, we've been looking this to the downside, because for the last several weeks, it's been doing slightly just that, moving down. But if you've noticed in the last week, there's been a bottoming formation that's been happening here. Is this symbol, all right, is the precious metals community finally ready for a rebound? And if so, how much? Well, we're talking about something that was at 17, all right? That's come down to around, uh, looks like about 15.7. And you might say, wow, that's not a whole, that's not a lot of uh, movement. What if we went back up and filled this gap up and came up here, back up here to around the 16.6, 16.7 area, all right? Could you make money with about a 90 cent move? Well, really, there's one way to find out, and that is to go back to Darknet. Uh, the darknet uh, strategy you see here, and um, look at SLV, 
Now this is an example, the October 27th, 15 puts for 76 cents. Let me just click on those for a moment. I'm gonna open up this risk graph and I wanna show you what it's gonna look like uh, by looking at that particular trade. First of all, it's gonna cost us $75.50. All right, let's take a look at the graph. So we're looking at going long, the October 27th, 15 calls. Look, 74 by 77, that's a three cent bid ask. That's fantastic. But what is it gonna be worth if we get to 16, all right? Now, if all of you are looking at this risk graph with me, this up here is not 16. This is 19, 18, 17, 16, somewhere down around here, around the blue line, all right? So one thing we can do, if you use this tool set, I'm gonna show you something you can do. Go down to the bottom, go past the volatility charts. By the way, we'll, just, we'll explain these a little bit more next week. Go down here past the volatility charts, and I want you to go down to where it says stock limits. Notice mine says 12 to 19. Well, I wanna change that 19, I'm gonna change that to 16. So I'm gonna come over here. Let's change that to 16. And let's go ahead and change the 12 to, let's call it 14. Now I'm gonna update the risk graph. And what we're gonna see is we're gonna see this particular graph now reset itself, all right? And it's doing it right now. Still the same price, still the, still the same break even, but what we did was we opened the graph up so we could see it better. Now I can see the risk much better. Now I can see what it's gonna be worth if it gets back to 16. And if it gets back to 16, you know, I'm looking at for a $75 investment, I'm looking at about $30 of profit. You might say, well, that's not much. We didn't say 16 though, did we? We said 16.6. So if we change this one more time, let's go back down to the bottom, all right? And let's make this, 16.6. Now the reason I like to put in the actual target price is because if we put the target price in, what we're doing is we're actually giving ourselves exactly on the hard right edge what we stand to make theoretically. Take a look at this, 16.6 right there. All I've got to do now, folks, is just take that 16.6 and just draw down. Let me get the rest of that. There you go draw down all the way down and now we're sitting at around eighty dollars profit hmm 75.50 well, let's call it eighty dollars risk to make eighty dollars profit that's a hundred percent there you go so what i want you to do is I want you to take a look at these trades that we've put together for you tonight. We've talked about what a call is, we've talked about what a put is, we talked about exercise and assignment, expiration, strike prices, uh, we talked about volatility. I gave you three examples that we're looking at right now. Apple, all right, was our first example. Bed Bath & Beyond was our second example. And our third example was in SLV. As you can see, three completely different trades. All right, three different uh, uh, opportunities as to how we came about those trades. The first two I'm gonna show you next week, all right, but they happen to do with a lot with trend analysis. The third we showed you this week with Darknet, uh, the Darknet trading strategy. And so at this point, what I wanna do is I wanna open it up for some final questions, Jay. If you have any final questions for me, now would be a great time to uh, bring them up. Well, I was just answering how to uh, calculate or figure extrinsic value. Did you want to touch base on that again? Because you were talking about in, in the money, out the money, and out of the money. Yeah, absolutely. Um, well, let me uh, let me bring us back over to the screen here. So let's bring up. Uh, let's see if I can bring up a stock a stock scan. Here we go. All right. So this is the Apple once again. All right. And if you look, Apple closed at one fifty five thirty nine. All right, on the screen. Now, if you look at extrinsic value. Okay, extrinsic is what we call time value. Uh, if you look at a stock, every one of these uh, options that you see, that is, uh, in this case, I'm looking at uh, puts, let's look at the calls, excuse me. Everything above or higher than 155.39 that you see there, that's gonna show uh, the, the actual, if you notice here, the 157.5s, 188, extrinsic value, 188. 
Uh, 160 calls, 110, extrinsic value 110. That's because everything that's in that option is pure time. Down here, as you get more and more in the money, the way you come up with, it, with time value is very simple. You look at the price of the stock. Right now, uh, the, the price of Apple is 155.39. A 155 call has 39 cents of real value in it. Everything else is going to be time. And that's how this is calculated. That's how extrinsic value is calculated. All right. If you look at a 150 call, this is easy. Just take the round numbers. 150 call. All right. Subtract, uh, if, if you look here, uh, $5.39 of this call option is going to be real value. The call is trading for $640. So $5.39 is real. That means 101 which is, shows it right there, is time. The deeper in the money you go, the less extrinsic value is going to be and the more your real value is going to be on the option. Does that answer the question, Jay, as I erase? I believe it does. The, the, the response was thank you. <laughs> awesome. So, guys, I had a, a, a screen up for you that says spot the opportunity. That was our dark net contrarian strategy. All right. Create your low risk option trade. That's number two. We did that, too. That's with uh, the, the option spreads. Plan, execute and manage the trade. And that's where you go in and you, uh, you know, you you uh, work with your broker on that. And, you know, it's actually quite interesting, Jay, because tomorrow is a very important day. Um, it's, and it's an actual it's almost kind of a ironic day, if I might say, and uh, that is that tomorrow, Options Express, as a company, tomorrow's their last day, because starting Monday, everything rolls into Charles Schwab. So I kind of, you know, I look at that and I think, well, that happened to us with Optionetics uh, at one time, where everything kind of rolled to them. And so think of this as like the turducken of uh, company taking over company, taking over company. But the good news is, is that we got Optionetics back. We're back. We're here. I'm not going anywhere. And uh, this company will never again be sold to a brokerage firm. Uh, I can assure you of that. So um, happy to have you guys around. Uh, let me know what you think. If you can drop in, your co in the comment section right now, let me know what you think about this new format that we're doing, where we're doing live on the screen. All right, because uh, this is something brand new to us. Uh, and, and again, my, my goal is to get this better and better. And for me right now, what's going to make it better is the latency. All right, the latency has got to get better. But we're getting there. I thought this was a lot of fun. I think you could see a little bit better of what I'm looking at using my hands rather than using a mouse. And uh, would love to hear from your, you on the comments. Now, starting next week, what we want to do is this. So homework. First of all, homework for this week. Just follow the case studies we discussed tonight. All right. Those were in Apple, A A P L, uh, Bed Bath and Beyond, and that is B B B Y. And then, of course, uh, S L V, which is the iShares Silver Index. Um, also, if you would like, if you want to do this, watch the Darknet video that we have. Uh, it's from the free videos that we have on TomsOptionTools.com. So if you go over there, you can see the free videos, all the videos that we have. And those of you that are new subscriber or that are new to us, um, if you go to TomsOptionTools.com, then you're going to see a spot up in the upper right hand corner, and that says free seven day trial. And so that gives you that does give you a free seven day trial to our software. Um, and that's a full trial, okay, which means you can pick what you want. And so it, it gives you a, a fantastic uh, way of checking out everything I just did on the screen. And uh, let me just show you where that is. So if you go to uh, option, Tom's option tools .com, right here is your seven day free trial. All right, you just click on this. And then this will take you down the path to doing all the things that I just did and then much, much more. So uh, that's our homework for the week. For next week, what I want you to do is I want you to think about this. We're going to do a review on week one. We're going to review this homework. We're going to look at these case studies and see how they're going. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to do continued case studies on calls, puts, and darknet trades. We'll see what's available next week. Third, we're going to talk about spreads. All right, spreads versus calls and puts and when to use them. And I've got a fantastic fantastic stock I want to share with you uh, when it comes to spreads. It's the only way I trade it. 
Um, and number four, we're going to trade money patterns. All right, I want to show you something called money patterns that has 90% uh, accuracy. I know it's hard to believe. I promise I will show you exactly what I'm talking about next week. So until then, folks, uh, hope you enjoyed our week one of our fall trading essentials webinar. Glad to be back and actually now back in front of you as if I were at a hotel or conference center. This is a lot of fun. And so, uh, Jay, any final words from you? If we were to take the time to go over all the positive commentary about the new format, the screen, and the way you're doing this right now, we'd be here all night. They love it. That's awesome. That is awesome. I love to hear that, guys. So thanks again. Have a great evening. Um, I will get the recording out to you as soon as possible. We'll get the slide deck to you as well and any other information that you might need. Uh, again, we'll see you back same time next week, and we'll be getting into a whole lot more. Till then, have a great evening, guys. It's Tom Gentile. So long. We'll see you soon. Bye now.